Hi guys, my name is Damien. Here's a list of the top hacks I came across whilst travelling in the caravan up the east coast of Australia. Right, this one seems pretty simple and it's going to be different in all caravans, but our hot water service, 240 volt switch, was that switch there, which I didn't think was very accessible and I knew I'd always forget about it. So I just got an electrician to wire up one of these plugs. It's got the on and off for the two GPOs and then a third switch in the middle which is for the hot water service. Alright guys this one's super easy, super cheap. I got two digital thermostats off of eBay and installed them. One's fridge, one's freezer. It's off right now. That's why they're both so warm, 20 degrees. And then installed a buzzer so that uh, if it goes below whatever this set point is it will beep and also just a switch so that it's not always running. All right, guys, this is another one that blows me away. In the shower, so simple. Everyone complains that their shower heads bounce off and clang around. All I did is got a $15 hose from Bunnings, rubber. It pinches up the top. We've done 20,000 kilometers. It has never fallen. We installed this door. So when we put the little one to sleep, we can have the lights on in here and it's not shining in there. It keeps it a lot darker. For us, we didn't use it. She's quite good sleeping with light. For, for others, it might be a godsend. Another thing that I did install was this. It's a water flow meter. I am aware of how inaccurate the water tank gauges are and found that we were just running out of water at annoying times. So we installed this so we could see exactly how many liters we were using, how many we had left, so we could ration out our days. The other thing we did do is install a higher grade water pump for a bit higher pressure in the shower. This one really surprises me that it's not a more standard feature in most caravans. All I've got is a water line coming off of the cold with a tap on it and then it's plumbed into the inlet of the water tanks. So whenever we're connected up to mains all I have to do is turn this on. Saves you from having to disconnect your caravan's mains or get a second hose out just to fill the tank when you might be sitting there for 24 hours anyway. All right guys, this one comes back to audio quality. This caravan came with built-in speakers in the ceiling. As it's such a small ceiling void, it's almost impossible to find some decent speakers that are gonna replace that due to the height restrictions. So I went and bought, purchased a slimline subwoofer. Sits back there, doesn't take up much room at all. Plugs into the back of the unit and improves the sound quality a hundredfold. Okay, so I fit our unit just in the kitchen cabinetry here up on the side. It's 2,200 continuous watt or 4,400 peak. It's been nothing but reliable. Okay, simple inline water filter for all your mains water coming in. I have this all connected right now in the loop, which is how I travel. But typically this end here, which goes to this spool, I'll just spin out, run it to the mains, hook it up, and then it comes back through, in through the water filter, and then back in through the pressure reducer and one-way valve. Okay guys, I got a thermostat hydronic heater, which sucks in there and blows out there. All it is is a radiator that passes your hot water through it and then circulates it back to your hot water service and a fan that blows the heat from that radiator out here. I purchased this online, I think it cost me $550. If I built it myself, I reckon it might cost me 50 bucks. Next time I would build it myself. So another thing just while we're on the topic is I had actually installed originally a diesel heater, which sounded great and absolutely stunk. Every time I turned it on, it's back dirty smoke. It, it's a diesel engine essentially, and it absolutely stinks. I've spoken to a couple of people and they've said that they've had no issues with theirs. Maybe they're not as sensitive as me, or maybe I've got a faulty one, not sure. Ended up returning that and swapping it for this hydronic heater, and this thing has just been perfect. It's very quiet and uses a fuel that you're already carrying, which typically if you're out in the forest, it's gonna be your gas cylinder on the front that's running your hot water service. Okay, we're at the front of the van here. Sorry about the bit of wind. Got the Weber barbecue, fits in just. What I've done is 
above that, I got Stratco to make up a flashing. I think it's about 100 mil down, and I've got a table up here which straps above everything else, leaving plenty of room at the bottom for your chairs. The other thing I did in here is I put power in here. It wasn't originally in here, and I put a four-way power point because uh, this was going to be the locker that I'd chuck anything I was charging, any batteries, drill batteries, anything like that. This one's well known, but absolutely love it, and that is a clothesline underneath your awning. All the pieces are from Bunnings, typical clothesline wire with just a stainless steel tension bolt. Okay, we're at the back now. I put a big generator box on to carry, you guessed it, a generator. In seven months, I reckon we used it uh, all of maybe once. I would definitely leave the generator at home next time and utilize this space just for storing the hoses. Another one that I see a lot of people talk about and that's the gray water outlet. Typically, they just come straight out. There's a lot of different connectors. All I did is I got a flexible sink 50 mil connector, and then I've allowed that so it can either drop and sit like that, or the screw on the here is in my gray water hose. When I'm finished, I just leave it up like that while I'm driving around. Another thing I did do, I went through all of these vents and actually put mosquito mesh behind them all because we were in a very well-built caravan and we're still getting mosquitoes in. I got more questions about this than anything else on our entire trip and this was this tough dog electric jockey jack. It has a light on the front for night time and simple down and up. What I would typically do when getting ready, I got this clip, simply put the clip under there to hold it and that'll be lifting it off the van whilst I do undo all the shackles and everything. All right, I actually saw someone do this up in Queensland somewhere and thought, what a genius for when your caravan's parked that you can't park your car in front of it. But I actually just bought a six meter Anderson patch lead so you can plug the front of your caravan in the back of your car, even if your car's quite a distance away. Simple and works perfectly. Okay, our caravan came with one 120 watt solar panel. So I just connected in line three more to bring us to a total of 480 watts. I checked the gauge of the wire and the solar charger, no worries, it had the ability to carry the amperage put through. Okay, the other thing I installed is two antennas for Wi-Fi dongle. They pass straight through to here. I also have a charger, constant 12 volt USB charger for it up here. Okay guys, one of my favorite things would definitely be the power inverter. Changes your 12 volt batteries into 240 volts so you can use toasters and hair dryers and whatever other high voltage stuff you have in the middle of the forest and in the middle of nowhere without need to plug in. Now I've got mine in the bottom of the kitchen here. I just screwed it up against the side so I could fit other things in next to it. I did put some extra fans and a vent on for extra ventilation although I didn't actually end up needing it. This particular unit comes with the power button on the front. I've also put one just under the kitchen sink here. This one's not for everyone, but I hated the idea of the cassette system. So I drilled a 100 mil hole in the bottom of the cassette, bolted a flange to it, glued it, and then created another tank down here using 100 mil piping with straps. They then go into a macerator unit, which then pumps out this hose back here which I just throw over the rear bar no need to put it away or wrap it up for flushing it out I have this hose mounted here which goes straight through and into a sprinkler head which I have in here which will flush through the system and the switch on and off obviously for the macerator I hated the camera setup they were always bulky and in weird places so I actually got rid of their unit this is my rear vision mirror that is actually the picture from the back of the caravan. It feels natural. It's where you look, where you want it to be, not in the bottom corner of your, of your dash and it's not in the way. Now this one's not as specific to the caravan, but to your car. I actually put airbags in between the coils. That's a blue in there. Inflate them to 50, 60 PSI, whatever you need to level the back of your car out with the extra weight on it. Okay guys, if you like this, please hit the like button and be sure to let us know your comments below. Cheers.